So this is my Penn State Iowa preview. Penn State's three and out to start the season. They're going to be playing Iowa this weekend in Iowa. Uh, I, I feel a little worried about this game, but there's part of me that says Penn State should be able to take care of business and be able to get a win here. Um, mainly just because Penn State's, you know, they're just a more talented team. I mean, they recruit better year in, year out, pretty much every year, and they're just a more talented team with better players. But that doesn't always work. That doesn't always mean the better team wins. Usually it does. And in this case, it should, like how it did last year, but we don't know. And this Iowa team is really looking at this game as a big opportunity, and they have a history of winning games They'll, in Kinnick Stadium and against very high quality teams. Penn State's number four in the nation right now. And the last three games that Iowa played against top five teams at home, they won them all. They beat Penn State in 2008 when Penn State was number three. Then they killed Michigan State as number five when Michigan State was number five in 2010. And then last year when Michigan was number three, they beat them on a last-second field goal, much like the 2008 game when Penn State lost to them as number three, as I already mentioned. So Iowa is a dangerous team at Kenning at night, but there's a lot of things that I have to say that I don't really think are going to be able to apply to this. Those teams, like mainly Michigan and that 2008 Penn State team, that those teams are very last year's Michigan team and the uh, 2008 Penn State team. They were very very depending upon the defense. And if Iowa can get into a defensive battle with Penn State, they have a good shot. But I don't really think many people think that's going to happen. Uh, m most people, including me, would probably agree that Penn State's going to be able to find ways to put up points on Iowa. It, you know, Iowa has okay defense. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, but Iowa State put up 41 on them. Now, Iowa State's not going to make a bowl this year, probably. So, in North Texas was doing okay in the first half. So, that means that this Iowa team defensively might not be that bad. Their front seven isn't bad. Their secondary isn't terrible from what I hear. Um, but Penn State's going to be able to put up big plays on them here or there. They just have too much star talent. They got McShorley, they got Barkley, they got all these receivers that are good, uh, and they're going to be able to make plays. But the biggest thing is if this offensive line can create, create holes for Barkley, watch out. Watch out. Because they're, I mean, they're probably going to key in on Barkley and make McShorley pass. The only way this Iowa team just has to be Iowa's strategy to be able to stop Barkley and hope that we that they can attack McShorley and keep him on his feet and not get set and, and kind of like what Pitt did and not make a good pass. Because if they can do that and get McShorley flushed out of the pocket and not make him have any real accurate passes and key in on Barkley, it's, it's going to be a hard game. But once again, I don't know if Iowa quite has the horses to do that because on paper it sounds a lot easier. And that's 2018... 2008 Penn State team didn't have that kind of talent. They had Daryl Clark. They had a, a few okay players, but they were more defensively minded, like last year's Michigan team. And when you're like that, you can kind of get into a battle almost and kind of, it, you know, it's loud. It's a loud stadium. You know, 08 Penn State and 16 Michigan were probably, you know, kind of, having a hard time hearing maybe, they were getting confused, they weren't already stellar offenses, so now Iowa has them in their mind. So, and then defensively they did okay, but, you know, not completely well enough. Penn State defense versus Iowa offense. The key for Penn State is to not get off balance. And the key for Iowa is to keep Penn State off balance by having a Crom Waitley be a dominant factor in the game, which means he needs to be taking the ball a lot of the time. Penn State needs to be focusing in on him because I think Penn State's secondary is good. It's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. 
and they should be able to handle Iowa's receivers because Iowa doesn't really have any real standout receivers. So if Penn State can kind of just go man-on-man almost and have those safeties back there, obviously, that'll be okay. But if Penn State can stack maybe seven, eight, and just kind of try to key in on, on a Crum Wadley when he gets that ball and just go to the ball and just attack him, um, that's a good game plan. A Crum Wadley's a good player, and that's how I was going to have to win this game is to be, you know, first and ten, you know, maybe five yards from a Crum Wadley. Then next play, six yards. First down. You know, but the problem with Iowa is the the thing that Penn State's defense is going to need to do is to bend but don't break because they're going to have long drives, and if they only get field goals all out of them, they're not going to be able to keep up with Penn State's offense. That's a big key to the game. Because, like, think about it. Iowa's offensive line is pretty good. It's very good. And if Penn State doesn't get a lot of pressure on them, then a Crumley is going to have holes, and he's going to be able to get out and – get around some of these front four and a linebacker is going to have to make a play and it's probably going to be already a gain anyway. But if Penn State can put a lot, if if they can just get one tackle where it's behind the line, like let's say first and 10 and Penn State bull rushes a crumb Wadley and they get a guy from the outside and he comes in. Now it's second and 13 and let's say a crumb Wadley, they run it to him again. He goes outside he gets four yards. Now it's third and nine. So now it's third and nine. What's Iowa going to do? They're, they're not going to give it to Wadley. So now Penn State. So now Penn State's in a good position because the guy can't run. The, the quarterback can't run. Wadley. The only option they have is to give it to Wadley on a screen, and Penn State's probably going to have that covered anyway. Hopefully, and so these drives are going to be able to stall if, if Penn State can get one tackle for a loss for a couple yards or a sack or something for a, like a, lo- a tackle for a loss. They're in good shape because I don't know if Iowa can make big chunk plays consistently. If that happens once through a drive and they get it, it's not going to happen again probably. So I think these drives might stall, and that's a big key to the game. How I see the game going out is I see McShorley doing pretty good. I think this crowd's going to be a little wild in the beginning. I think they're going to be keying in on Barkley. I think Penn State, the first couple drives, might not um, have a real good idea of what to do. I think Iowa might keep them off balance a little bit, but I think Penn State's going to be able to hold their own, and Iowa's going to be able to hold their own in the first half, and then, uh, I, I mean the first quarter. Then second quarter, Penn State's going to get a little rhythm going. They're going to get Barkley out for a couple okay chunks of yards. They're going to get some receivers going, but Iowa's going to try to keep a lid on some of those big plays, and they are trying to key in on Barkley. Barkley has a pretty good day so far, but it's not great. And um, the Penn State defense is doing decent, but they are keeping him off balance a little bit. A Crum Wadley's doing a good job. He's keeping him in the game. Another thing is a Crum Wadley might not be 100%, and their second string guy's not in there. He's not playing. So they really only have like a one running back that's good, and he might be hurt. So um, that's another thing to account for. Uh, and then I think later on in the game, you know, I, I think um, Iowa keeps it close, but I think in the end of it, Penn State just has a little bit too much talent. For this Iowa team, I think Penn State's a good team. I think Iowa's a pretty good team as well. But, you know, I, I look at the Iowa State game and I go, come on. I mean, Penn State should be able to handle this team, I think. Um, it, it's more of a history of what's happened in Kinnick Stadium than a present. And um, Penn State needs to live in the present. Can't you be worried about what happened before. Because when nobody on the team or staff even coached in any of those games, not even the 08 game, okay? So we got to live in the present here and move forward and try to break this streak. And that's something that Penn State should ride on their shoulder and be like, we're not losing, we're not losing. So I think Barkley has a pretty good day. I think McShirley does pretty well. I, th- I think he can figure some guys out. I think Penn State will eventually be able to move the ball on them, especially on the Iowa secondary. Um, and um, McShirley will be able to get out and do some things. Um, Penn State's going to – they're not going to put up a ton of points, but they're going to do enough because they just got a little too much talent, you know, in the um, skill positions. And then defensively, I think Penn State will be able to um, pretty do, do well in the secondary and try to make Iowa pass their way to a victory. And, um, you know, I, I think Iowa will be able to get a Crom Wadley over 100 yards. 
Um, but I, I still don't think it'll be enough just because of the fact that Iowa just doesn't quite have enough. So I got Penn State 31-20. Peace out.